be going on a while. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. So there's already participants joining now. So you're good. If you click on the participants tab, you can see. But I, I, can I? Yeah. Um. So on the bottom, um, there's already twelve people here. So you're there's slowly yeah. people will just keep coming. But I, I um, sorry, I don't, I don't see those people coming. It's okay. I do. I see them. Oh, are you letting them in? Uh, so the, uh, nobody needs to let them in now uh, because if they're registered, they can just click the link and join. They're all joining now. We have 15, fourteen or fifteen people, so. You can just welcome everyone and start, and people yeah. will continue to join as the webinar continues. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We will start shortly. We will just give another minute for people to um, come in, and then we will start our webinar. We are at um, the uh, Confident Parents Driving Kids Behavior are with the Right Fit for You um, webinar. So thank you for joining us. We will we'll start shortly. Okay, so um, I think we are ready to, to start and I will like to introduce myself and uh, Stephen A. Ambrise and, and happy to be here with you. And today's webinar, it's about the Confident Parents Driving Kids Behavior Home-Based Coaching Program available to, uh, to parents living in British Columbia. Since uh, 2015, this program has helped parents and caregivers of children aged 3 to 12 to manage mild to moderate anxiety or behavior challenges. In this webinar, we're going to better understand the program content, uh, if this program is a good fit for you and your family, and what you can expect from weekly coaching sessions, and how to enroll. Uh, you will also walk away with practical strategies to take home and start using immediately. Please be aware that this session will be recorded and will be posted in our uh, Care for Caregivers website uh, for you to watch later or share with friends and colleagues. Uh, this free webinar is brought to you by Care for Caregivers, an online mental health resource for healthcare workers in British Columbia. Her, uh, Care for Caregivers is a joint in initiative of the Canadian Mental Health Association, BC Division, and Safe Care BC, funded by the Ministry of Mental Health and Addictions. While we meet today on a virtual platform, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the land which we each call home. I want to start by recognizing that we are gathered on the ancestral, ancestral and unceded territory of the First Nations, Inuit and Metis people across British Columbia. We thank them for being good caretakers of the land and allowing us to be visitors on this shared territory to do good work. I will also um, like to share with you our upcoming webinars. Um, on August, we're hosting two webinars. Uh, one that's on uh, August 21st, Silence Mental Health, Stigma and Compassion, and August 30th, Vicarious Trauma and Vicarious Resilience. And on September 14th, we have uh, Demystifying and Destigmatizing Suicide. Please visit our uh, website, uh, Care for Caregivers, on their upcoming free webinars to register. Uh, please allow me to share with you uh, our Care to Speak program, which is a peer-based phone, text, and web chat service 
that provides free, confidential, and unbiased support to health and social support workers in BC. And Care for Caregivers has just launched their sixth podcast now available through the website. To learn more about the difficulties caregivers face while we provide resources and support uh, those who need it. So um, I'm happy now to introduce you our speakers. Uh, we have uh, Becky Higgins. She is a registered clinical counselor working as interim clinical lead for the uh, Confident Parents Driving Kids Behavior Program. She enjoys supporting the growth of program coaches, as well as providing families with practical strategies for their everyday lives. And we have James Arbois, is a reflective coach and a trainer um, at Confident Parents Driving Kids program. He has been involved in the program since 2019. He is passionate about supporting parents in tapping into and developing their parenting toolboxes. Thank you very much both for being here with us. And I would like to um, just remind everyone, if you have any questions, please use our Q&A box and either one of our speakers or myself will read your questions to be answered at the end of the webinar. And so um, now, um, well, I'm so pleased to have you both here and allow me to turn it to you um, to start your uh, presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sibane. I'm going to share my screen now. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, sort of like uh, Sibane already mentioned, she did a great introduction for us there in terms of what we're gonna cover today. Um, you know, hoping by the end of this hour, you have a better sense of our program, what we can help with, but also we're gonna get a little experiential with you today and hopefully leave you with a couple strategies to take home. Um, there was a PDF that was sent out uh, yesterday, I believe. And so at sort of the midway point during our presentation, we will be referring to that as well. Um, so feel free to take notes um, if it's helpful. Um, all right, so let's get into confident parents driving kids behavior. So we are free, we are BC wide, and we use the Generation PMTO program. Um, PMTO stands for Parent Management Training Oregon model. So it's been around for over 50 years, um, but like Sib and I already mentioned, we've been in BC since 2015. Um, we are delivered via telephone. We've always been delivered via telephone, even before everything sort of went um, into these online models um, to make sure we could accommodate all of the province and uh, various times. We work Monday to Friday, um, Monday to Thursdays going as late as 8 p.m. sessions, and we also have Saturday sessions as well. Um, I'm sure you're wondering, you know, who do we help? So listed there are sort of the key ideas or the key sort of issues we are helpful for. Um, looking at poor cooperation, challenges with inattention and hyperactivity. So ADHD diagnoses are really common for our program, as well as mild to moderate conduct concerns. Um, so things you might see in like an oppositional defiance diagnosis. But we're also looking at how do those behaviors impact family functioning, being able to leave the house, being able to leave your child with other caregivers um, so you can get a break and pieces like that. Um, so that is sort of the, the overview, but we're going to get into a little bit more specifics now. So I'm going to throw it to James to talk about um, program eligibility. Yeah. OK, so let's take a closer look at who is a good fit for our program, just like Simone said. Uh, this program is geared toward uh, supporting families with children ages 3 to 12. Um, there are two streams for this program, and we'll take a, a deeper dive into this in just a moment. Um, there's the stream uh, considering mild behavior challenges, and then uh, the other stream is a longer form of the program looking at moderate behavior challenges. Um, just because of the nature of the tools that parents get to use in the program, it's necessary that parents are, uh, you know, parents and caregivers are in contact with with the children as these 
uh, tools are supporting cooperation and communication um, you know, amongst parents and children. And you know, again, just highlighting um, you know because this is telehealth, we have a uh, large reach. We're looking at uh, supporting families all across British Columbia from. Terrace, BC to Fernie, <laughs> right, right to, to to here in Vancouver. So that's um, a nice, uh, you know, part of this this, this job of just you know uh, the families and communities that we're able to reach. Um, having said that, looking at uh, you know there are some exceptions for uh, uh, you know the program, um, and again, just emphasizing that uh, we are geared towards. Um, supporting children that are just three to 12. So under the age of three or over uh, the age of 12 at the time of referral, that's going to be um, an exception for exclusion, uh, as well as uh, children who have a diagnosis of FASD, fetal alcohol syndrome, um, and uh, autism spectrum disorders. Okay, um, behavior that is uh, considered beyond moderate. So um, in cases where behavior is uh, severe um, or there you know, are challenges beyond that moderate uh, stream um, like mood, emotion, self-harm, substance use. And these are also exclusions from the, from the program. Uh, uh, our intake team would be like the first line of, of defense there. Um, you know, the first uh, uh, interaction with, 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 with these families as well as uh, you know, coaches and, and supervisors would would also look at different ways that we can support these families as, um, you know, uh, again, the program is geared toward and, you know, has been tested in the age range and the you know, behavior uh, considerations that we've listed above. Becky, is there anything else that you'd like to add here? No, I think you covered it really well. I think we'll move to a bit of overview on what we do. Um, James mentioned that we have two program streams, a brief program and a moderate program. So let's uh, dive into that a little bit. But before we get there, we're going to talk just a bit about um, the role of the coach. So it's different than counseling. It's different um, in a lot of ways because the role is very active and involves teaching, but it also involves role play, which you're going to see a little bit later today what that looks like. But, you know, the goal is to help facilitate your learning and ensure that you're ready to try out these tools when you get off the phone. Um, they do go through an extensive training program. So we have this model we're using and part of being a part of our program means you the coaches go through a, a certification process, which is lengthy. We won't get into details with it, more just to say that, you know, you can feel confident that there's a lot of training, there's ongoing feedback and support to make sure that they're providing uh, sessions within fidelity, which means in line with what we know to be effective, in line with what the research shows is effective. Um, you know, they're also there to answer your questions, support your progress, encourage you, um, keep you motivated, right? It's one thing to take a book home, try and read it and implement it. But I think often the feedback we hear, what makes the biggest difference is having that person you connect with every week who keeps you accountable and offers that midweek support as well through email to answer any questions, you know, things that come up when you actually take these tools and try it out in real life, as it were. Um, all right, James is going to lead us through now a little bit more about the content itself. Okay, great. So yeah, let's take a closer look at what this journey entails, uh, what you have uh, to look forward to. Um, you'd be on a session with a coach for about 50 minutes to an hour long over the course of your program duration. Um, you know, we've, we've really emphasized you know, you know, there being two streams, the six week program, the brief, and then the longer form, the moderate. And in, in just a moment, I'm excited to get to the next slide. In just a moment, we're going to look at uh, the tools and the sessions that are included in the program. Um, most notable thing here on this page is, yes, right? So looking at the brief program, it's, uh, you know, again, looking at the six weeks of six sessions. And then there's also an opportunity to take an enhanced module. And that enhanced module would give you the opportunity to take four more sessions um, 
you know, with the topic of your choosing. Uh, there's three main streams there, the strengthening emotional connections, enhancement module, there's promoting school success, and then a module looking at sibling cooperation. And whilst you know they all look great, <laughs> I'm I'm sure uh, I won't share my bias, which my person is my personal favorite. Um, we 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 encourage families to to make their choice of of one. Um, and Becky, you can take us to the next slide. We'll take a deeper look. Excellent. Okay, so looking at the program overview session. One, um, and we'll start at the very top. Session one is looking at strengthening your family. That for us would be an introduction into the program. Uh, it's the parent, it's your first opportunity at um, you know, learning what goes into the program, uh, you know, covering some of the information that we've covered today as well. Really just emphasizing how uh, the parent and the coach, how you and the coach would be uh, um, uh, moving across the entire program. Um, session two, we're looking at uh, giving good directions. And just as Becky had no has noted um, uh, earlier on, we are going to get an opportunity to get a sneak peek into that session. I'm excited for that as well. Uh, session three, session five, we're looking at uh, positive reinforcement tools. Session four, uh, we're looking at what I like to call the wonderful world of setting limits. Um, in that uh, particular se session, we get to, to dive into uh, timeout using that as a tool. Um, and then week six is a, uh, a program overview, a program review, highlighting uh, all of the wonderful work um, you know, we've accomplished in, in the program. And it's at this point in the program, in the six week program, where you're able to decide if you'd like to graduate the program, right? Uh, you know, families in this camp uh, might be saying like, hey, you know, I've, I've received all I need from the program. You know, the tools are great, they're wonderful. I'd like to be off on my merry way. Um, or you're deciding uh, to take an enhancement module. And again, we have them listed below, strength and emotional connections. You know, this one is looking at um, adding to the emotional toolbox in different ways that we can um, model these skills for, for our young ones. Um, promoting school success as well to bridge the gap between home and school. And then there is a module on, on siblings. And, you know, here we look at adapting, um, you know, the work that we've done in, in uh, the brief program, you know, to, to a wider scope, right? Uh, your coach is going to do very well to focus on um, you know, the child that has been referred to the program. Uh, so the siblings module gives us an opportunity to you know, sort of widen the scope there. Um, I'll give you just a moment to peruse the moderate program, the full intervention, of the moderate uh, program there below. You'll notice that it includes the sessions for the brief, and then it also um, has the um, it also has the enhancement modules sort of embedded uh, throughout that uh, program there. Yeah. All right, I'll hand it over to, to Becky. We've looked at some of the sessions. We've sort of gleaned over some of the program tools. Becky, you're going to talk a little bit more about, uh, you're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the skills that are being developed over the course of the program, so to speak. Thank you. Um, so like James said, we've kind of looked at now where we come from in terms of generation PMTO. And some of you might be wondering like, what what is behind all of that? What are we trying to accomplish? And while part of it is certainly giving you tools, there are some sort of key ideas, if you will, behind our program that really informs um, how they look. So it uses what we call the social interactional learning model. Definitely not some a word you would need to remember after today, but hopefully sort of these five ideas might stick with you a little bit and also noting that you know what it looks like for a three-year-old um, to use some of these things can be very different than a 12-year-old so also knowing that we do adjust the tools to fit the developmental age as well as you know what your goals are and what you're hoping to get out of it um, you know very much following the parents lead on you know your child best you're the expert in your child and we know that some of these concepts can be helpful. 
So the first is skill encouragement. So a huge emphasis in the program is looking at ways to get more of the behaviors you do want. Um, you know, what kind of pro-social, you know, behaviors do we want to see in our kids, both at home, at school, in the community? And how can we um, set, set the stage to get more of those? Um, but of course, the other side of that is limit setting, how to set clear boundaries and become consistent um, to decrease those problem behaviors, but in a mild way um, so that it can be used uh, based on the contingency of the behavior. Um, the third one is monitoring kind of what it sounds like, making sure, you know, how do we build safety and trust um, with our kids over time, especially as they get older and get involved in other environments? Um, you know, how do you build that connection as well so that we can communicate openly? Um, the fourth one is probably my favorite, positive involvement. Um, it says spending time together in pleasant activity. Part of what you know, this concept brings to our program is the love. This is where, you know, how do we build in regulating emotions, active listening? How do we build that connection? Um, because the goal isn't to, you know, raise little robots who do what we say, but also to have a really strong connection. Um, and then the last one there is problem solving. I'm sure many of you, you know, connected with kids, have your own kids, know that problems come in all shapes and sizes. And part of all the other tools we'll be looking at, hopefully ways to solve various problems you might have, but also we do have a structured six-step prob uh, problem-solving process to kind of use in like a family meeting um, environment to, you know, find solutions, prevent problems, and manage conflict. Um, now, just briefly, there is, you know, if, at the end of today's presentation, if you still have other questions, um, things you're wondering about, one thing we would encourage you to do is head to our website there, um, confidentparents.ca. We have a video um, for time's sake, we won't actually watch it. It's not super long, but it's a primarily it's some information about the program, but it's also a testimonial from the parent we see in this picture here, Nick who completed our program. Um, there's some quotes on the page here um, about how he felt at the end of the program. And I think it speaks uh, well to, you know, who we can help, but also hopefully anyway, what other parents would walk away with at the end of, you know, the mild or moderate program. Okay, so this is where things get to get a little bit exciting for a moment. And James and I are gonna switch things up a bit and do sort of a bit of coaching together um, to demonstrate a bit of what you could expect uh, from the program, but hopefully to also give you some actual strategies that you can leave here with today and um, start using with the kiddos in your life. So, James, I believe what you're going to do first is uh, lead these folks through sort of a bit of a strength exercise. So I'll, I'll throw the ball to you for that. Lovely. Yeah. You know, being that it is a strength-based program that we're looking at in uh, Parent Management Training Oregon PMTO, um, one of the first exercises we take uh, parents through, one of the first exercises we'll take you through is a round coming up with strengths. Uh, oftentimes it can be challenging <laughs> to pinpoint strengths. I think, you know, our natural inc inclination usually is to you know, think of what we could do better. Maybe sometimes we do better and we're thinking like, mm, I could have done this a little bit more better, <laughs> right? Or I could take that to the best. So, you know, it can be challenging to, to really uh, pinpoint those strengths. Um, so uh, if you have, uh, you know, something to write with, uh, something to type with, even, uh, we are going to look at uh, coming up with, you know, at, at, at most three strengths right now in this moment. So um, when thinking about strengths, I really like to think of strengths as, or parenting strengths as uh, different strategies that you might use with, with your kiddo, um, you know, different responsibilities that you might have as a parent, or different ways that you're able to connect and get into your, your child's world. So uh, first off, 
no, we're gonna have to fast forward a little bit. We'll say it's we'll say it's sometime in September. Uh, let's say it's like September fifteenth. It's after school. You are connecting with your child. Maybe you set up an activity. Maybe your child has decided that they don't want to move on to the next activity that you have. You're, you're supporting your child in transitioning. Okay, what, what strengths are now coming up for you? And maybe what ways are you able to you know, connect with your child in the moment to support them in, let's say, washing their hands or you know, getting ready for a snack? What what kind of strengths might it take to get you to that point? And you can just take a moment, reflect on you know, some of the strengths that you might uh, notice in your parenting after school, some of the strengths that you're appreciating in yourself at this point in time. And you can write that down on your page or you can type that out. Right, still sometimes it can be challenging to, to think of strengths. Um, so let's look out, outside of ourselves right now. Um, Maybe what's a strength that your you know, someone close to you in your life might pin on you as, as, as a parent. So it could be a best friend, it could be a coworker, it could be a family member. Right. And as you picture that person, right, just think about, reflect on what strength they they might give to you. Right. And um for the third rank, uh, you know, as a parent, sometimes your best mirror will be your child. <laughs> so um, as, you're, as you're picturing your child, maybe you have your child with you right now. <laughs> maybe you just go to them later on today. Um, what strength do you think your child would, would give to you? And, you know, it still might be hard to, to find what the strength is. So, you know, let's uh, think about you know, the weekend. Right? What, what kind of strengths are coming up for you as you're thinking of what you're, you're doing, what you're saying, or how you're interacting with your child on the weekend? Okay, and we'll just give you time to write that down. Excellent. Okay, so that's some of the work that you would encounter in session one, just getting a, uh, you know, a sense of uh, strengths, getting a sense of, um, you know, that strength-based mindset, looking at some goals. Becky, you're going to take us into session two as we're looking at direction. So oftentimes, um, something that comes up or a tool that I think we probably get the most positive feedback on um, is our, what we call our good directions formula. So what James and I are about to do is sort of demonstrate how, quite frankly, how it would sound if you were in the session learning it. Um, the good news is, is you'll actually then sort of vicariously learn it as well. Um, and we're going to do some practice with it um, together. So uh, James is going to sort of take on the role of a parent here, and I'm going to sort of put my coaching hat on, and we're going to move through um, some uh, pieces around giving good directions. And this is when that PDF we sent out will come in handy. So I'll kind of reference the pages as we get there. Um, all right. So James, thank you so much for sharing how that first home practice went. We've talked a bit about cooperation now, what that looks like for Johnny, his struggles around defiance, his struggles with ignoring you and you having to repeat yourself over and over. Um, and so now what I want to do is move into talking about how, what can we do to try and improve that cooperation to get closer to our goal of 70%. Um, now, you've probably heard the saying, ask and you shall receive. You heard yes. that one, James? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> totally. So what we say to be more true in our program is that how you ask affects what you receive. So we're going to really focus on the how uh, together. So, James, what we're going to do is I'm going to get that you to imagine that you're like a six-year-old version of you, let's say. And you're playing in your room. You're on the floor doing some Lego. 
and I'm going to be a parent and I'm going to give you some directions and we're going to talk about why some of them aren't very effective and hopefully why others are. Okay, so for this first one, you're in your room, you're playing with your Lego, you're, you know, happily in your world. And I come into the room and I'm like, Ugh, James, how many times do I have to tell you to pick your shoes up? This is getting ridiculous. Pausing there, James. When you're six, how cooperative do you feel right now? Uh, <laughs> not very cooperative. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, more focused on you know, sort of you getting mad at me in this moment. Absolutely. Um, what did you notice? You mentioned mad. So what did you notice about my tone of voice there? It was a little bit elevated, I, I would say. Totally. Um, and what about my body language? If I was like standing in front of you, like what do you think I sort of looked like um, in that experience? Well, to me, I mean, I'm a six-year-old child, right? So like I kind of pictured you like in my mind, just like hovering over me, like really big, like a, sort of like a cloud that's forming. Yeah, yeah. looming. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so based on that, it sounds like it's not very likely you do anything about the shoes. Is that fair to say? Low likelihood. And if, if I do, I'm going to be you know pretty angry about it. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay, great. So let's try another way. And hopefully this one will be a bit better. Um, same thing though, you're in your room, you're playing with your Lego and I come in and I'm like, oh, wow, buddy, I love what you've built there. I walk over to you. I put my hand on your shoulder. You make eye contact. And I say, James, put your shoes in the closet now, please. Pause there. How is six-year-old James feeling now in terms of cooperation? I mean, the first word that came to me that I felt like saying was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay. Sure. That's what we want. sure. <laughs> Absolutely. What was different about my tone of voice this time? Um, I would say like pleasant, kind. Yeah. Sort of like, uh, like not emotion. Like there's the emotion was taken out of it. Mm, it's just quite calm. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, and when I like physically put my hand on your shoulder and we make eye contact, what impact does that have? What does that communicate to you as the child? Mm, like warmth, I would say. Like I felt like we even in just that like few seconds, like we were sort of connected there. Totally. So James, just to kind of summarize that and for the folks with us today, if you look at the uh, page the second page in the pdf that was sent out we'll throw up a slide of it now as well we have our directions formula um name action now please now before we talk about this formula a little bit more i want to do another sort of less effective direction it's so common we have a name for it we call it the drive by um so i'm going to kind of show you what that looks like we're going to talk about what what might be the challenges with cooperation with this one so same thing, you're in your room, you're playing. And as I, I'm sort of walking by your room and as I walk by, I'm like, hey buddy, we gotta go in five minutes, get your shoes, your coat and your backpack and I'll meet you at the car. And I just keep walking. Now, pausing there, when I give a wordy direction and walk away, what is the impact on that on your cooperation? Um, I'm, I mean, like, again, trying to put myself in the mind of, of a six-year-old, I might just like continue playing. I was like, okay, I'll give myself <laughs> an, another minute. Yeah, five minutes I got forever. What are you yeah. talking about, mom? Yeah, absolutely, right? They get distracted. Um, and even, I think I said, you know, I don't even remember all of the things like shoes, coat, backpack, right. car. Like, what do you think the likelihood is that you even remember all of the things I told you to do? Um, pretty low likelihood. I think uh, most likely I'd probably remember the very first or like, the last thing that you said. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And when I'm physically like removing myself or not even there, you kind of just, you see me and then I'm gone. What does that communicate about like the importance of following this direction? To me, to me, um, it's not important. I mean, like I said, I'd probably just continue to 
to play. Like that's what's most important to me in this in this moment. Right. So something we're going to do now is I'm going to do that second example again using our formula that we see on the slide here. And what might be helpful for you and for everybody with us is after the please write 10 second standing weight. So let's write that on our page and I'm going to show you what I mean by a 10 second stand and wait. So sometimes our kids, you know, pretend not to hear us or they need time to sort of their brains to click and go, oh, like mom's here with me. And so one way that we find to be really effective in giving them that moment to catch up um, and transition um, is with what we call the 10 second stand and wait. So I'm going to give you a direction. And you can sort of channel that uh, defiant energy you mentioned, James, like, you know, talking back, um, ignoring me, whatever you want to do is fine. I'm simply just going to count to 10 in my head. I'm not going to sit, respond to anything you're giving me. And I'm just going to repeat the direction again. Okay. okay, so where you're playing your Lego, I come up to you, I bend down, I put my hand on your shoulder. We make eye contact and I say, James, put your shoes in the closet now, please. Can't you see I'm building Lego? Just give me five more minutes, please, 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 please. I'm building. Mom. James, put your shoes in the closet now, please. Pause there. Great. Okay. When you are six and I wait and I repeat myself, what is the impact on that uh, on you? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to put myself in that role. It's like, oh, you're, you're, you're still here? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is important, I guess, hey? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and what did you notice about my demeanor when you were arguing? Did I just stay quiet? Um, or you notice I said quiet, I guess, maybe more my question is like, what do you think the benefit is of me not engaging with your like defiance, if you will? Oh, well, there, there was no, there was no back and forth, right? It was nice. really just sort of me, you know, like again, fighting for a, you know, a couple extra minutes before yes. that <laughs> transition. <laughs> you're hoping, you're praying that I might go, oh, okay, okay, fine. Right. right. Um, all right. So before we move to the next page um, and do some practice together, there's just a couple things I want us to look at here. So one thing you'll notice is it always ends with now, please. I'm curious on your thoughts on that, James. Can you tell me why you think we have the now, please, in there? Um, I guess the now is sort of like the the time frame. I mean, with the situations that we're looking at right now, uh, probably, I don't know, we're going to, to school or something, or it's time for dinner, right? So that mm -hmm. now is indicating to, to me, it's like, this is, that, this is a priority. So exactly. Speak. Maybe you've given warnings. You've said, hey, it's, di you know, dinner in five minutes. But by the time you're giving that direction, like you said, it it's now, like we are, we are moving on, we are transitioning now, and then modeling that politeness right. um, with the please. Right. Um, one more question for you before we move forward. You'll notice that this directions formula is a statement and not a question. So something that I think for myself, um, you know, when I first heard this formula, the hardest part to remove was a would you or a could you from the beginning? Um, will you even, um, which turns it into a question, right? And that's really normal, but I'm wondering what do you think the benefit is of saying it as a statement and not as a question? Well, just from experience, <laughs> right? mm -hmm. and when you're approaching with a question, it's like opening up that response, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, uh, will you put your socks away? It's like, well, no, no, thank you. <laughs> no, yeah. thank you. No, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Where a uh, question implies choice. Sure. sure. Um, and sometimes choice is absolutely the route we want to go. And sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's some very good insight you have there that we aren't opening it up for for an answer. We're actually telling them to do something. Right. OK, so let's turn to the next page. Um, everyone should have uh, what we call pointing words in the right direction. And so it has some 
examples of directions on the left hand side of the page and we're together going to turn them into good directions on the right hand side. So I will always read off the left hand side of the page and then sometimes I'll answer sometimes we'll give space for our participants to answer write it down for themselves before we give the answer i'm going to kind of share the floor a little bit here um, to do some practice um, okay i'll get us started with this first one here will you just go and do what i say can't you be good and do what mommy says so i would turn that into um matt put your toothbrush away now please whatever the be good is about that's what i'm making the direction about Okay, James, I'm going to get you to do the next one. How many times do I have to tell you how messy you make this room? What's the direction here? Uh, I could say something like, Brian, uh, clean the room now, please. Love that. Yes, right? It's not about the mess. What we do want to see is a clean room, right? So that's where that do action um, comes in. You don't have to say do, but like you've done beautifully there, you turned it into mess to clean. because That's what we want. Um, okay, I'm going to read off the left-hand side and we're going to give a few moments for our participants to write down an answer for this next one. Why do you have to leave your shoes in the middle of the floor? So writing down what a direction here is instead. So we might say, Matt, put your shoes in the closet now, please. Okay. Um, James, I'm gonna get you to do the next one there. Will you put away your video game? What's the direction here? Okay, so I would say something like, um, Brian, put the video game on the shelf now, please. I love that specificity, telling them where it goes, no room for debate. Um, and, you know, will you put away your video game, turning that into a statement instead of put your video game away? Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to give our folks here a chance again. So, Michael, get those shoes and books picked up now. So, as you folks are writing down your answer for the direction, the first thing to think about is that we would actually go find Michael um, based off what we've talked about today. We're there, we put our hand on our, his shoulder, and now I'll get you to write down, excuse me, the direction that you would do here. And if it were me, I would actually split this into two directions. There's lots of different options, but I might say, Michael, put your shoes in the closet now, please. He does that. Thank you for listening. And then because books go in a very different place in my home, I might say, Michael, put your books on the bookshelf now, please. Thinking about what's going to set them up for success. Some kids, great with two directions in one at one time. Others, they're going to get distracted and it's not going to happen. Okay, James, I'm going to get you to do the next one there. I don't care if your friend is waiting. You're not leaving your magazines all over the floor. What's the direction here? Um, something like, Brian, put your magazine on the rack now, please. Love that. Yes, right? Brian does that. Oh, buddy, I know Sam is waiting for you to play tennis. Like, go have fun. Do kids still play tennis? I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> um, I love how you focus on the magazines um, and kept, kept him focused on the task at hand before we, we entered the distraction of the friend, right? Okay, um, now it's our audience's turn. I wish you'd turn off the TV and come to the table, please. Let's write that into a statement of what we want to see. So it might be uh, David, turn off the TV and come to the table for dinner now, please. This one easily, one then the other. So I would put it together if it were me. Okay, we're going to do that same thing one more time, giving you folks a chance to write it down. The backpack does not belong in the middle of the room. What can we tell them to do with it instead? Okay. 
James, can you answer this one for us about the backpack? Yeah, I'm uh, just using a good direction formula. Um, Brian, um, hang the backpack on the hook now, please. Love that. Great. And now one quick sort of follow-up question, James. Let's imagine Brian says, no, I don't want to. Or like, I'll do it later, mom. Just give me five minutes. I'll do it later. I promise I'll do it later. Um, based on what we talked about earlier, what are you going to do after that, please, before you repeat yourself? Uh, 10 second. Yeah, Wait. I'm going to count to 10 in your head. You got it. And then repeat that direction exactly the same as you did. Okay. Um, so that sort of concludes the active piece, if you will. So thank you everyone for um, listening along. Hopefully this uh, directions is something you can take and use. I would say that doesn't necessarily always land super well with adults, but <laughs> great for kids. Um, so anyways, uh, now James is going to talk to us a little bit more just about the materials you would receive if you signed up for our program. Um, and then we'll talk about the referral process and then we'll have time for questions and answers. Sure, just very quickly. Um, like uh, you know, Becky was mentioning, and like we've just seen, uh, this program is very active. Um, it's active on the phone, so <laughs> like it's going to be active in real life. And we have some uh, materials to support. Um, another point that I'd like to really emphasize is Becky said something like, you know, we're not just throwing you the manual and say, you know, go off, you know, go parent, <laughs> right? Um, the coach is going to lead you session by session by session. And we have, uh, you know, a variety of different uh, materials to help you along the journey, along the way. Um, you know, these can help with a variety of different learning styles, right? Um, uh, you know, there's uh, kid bucks, not pictured, but another token is Scooby Loop. We have um, another positive reinforcement tool, the can do chart, the incentive chart. And then, you know, something that's going to be important throughout the entire program is um, the, the magnet there, the, the I feel uh, today magnet. Um, and then, you know, the actual um, parent material, the parent modules uh, that you can. Um, write some answers in. Uh, a large part of the program is looking at tracking your progress over the course of time. Uh, so the book sets you up for success with that. Um, each session has uh, some resource pages as well. The coach is going to do their best to cover the main points in the program. And then for further learning, if you'd like to you know, explore in more depth, there are resource pages. Um, strategies to regulate emotions there. Uh, so you're, you're seeing already some of the uh, work that goes into the program, some of the tools. And, um, you know, just like Becky said as well, there's an opportunity in the program for what we call a midweek check-in. And that gives um, you and your coach another opportunity to stay connected. All of these materials are here um, so that we are able to stay connected and focused on the work, um, Becky referral process. Great. Thank you, James. So if you're thinking, I think this might be helpful for me, I'm sure you're wondering how do I get connected? Um, so right now, um, we accept referrals from doctors and nurse practitioners. Um, doctors can include general practitioners, of course, pediatricians, um, psychiatrists, psychologists, um, and we know for some of the smaller communities, you might have access to a nurse practitioner. So we do um, allow that as well. The reason for that right now is, is partially so that there is someone who, you know, has some oversight. And that way, when you're done the program, we actually send the doctor sort of the results of pre and post program. And that way, if we're thinking, hey, I think this family might still need some additional support, there's someone who can help navigate those next steps. And you're not just sort of left going, uh oh, what now? Um, so that is the referral process. The referral form is on our website. So often doctor, many doctor's offices now do have them, but if your doctor's never heard of it, you can always print it off, take it to them. If you don't have a doctor, um, you can always uh, get in touch with our general email address because we do have ways through 
ever since I think the pandemic, especially with like online ways of getting connected with doctors, even to get just a referral for us as well. Um, so we're going to do our Q&A now, but I will, um, here is the website as well as our general email address for anyone who has questions that might need to be directed there. Thank you, James and Becky, for this uh, useful information. Uh, we have here one question. Uh, it says, uh, what if six-year-old James' response is, oh, mom, I'm focused on my Lego and let me play and ignores you over and over? It's a great question. And I knew, I knew someone yes. would ask it. Yes. <laughs> we talked about this yesterday. <laughs> um, you know, the the directions formula in a lot of ways is foundational to what comes next and it wouldn't be fair nor do we have time today to really get into that and so if that is a situation you encounter I would say you may be a good fit for us um, and that would be what comes in subsequent sessions it builds into the limit setting um, always what I tell parents though when we've just covered this piece so far is well, do what you would normally do because this is as far as I've taken you so far. So maybe the directions helps that 10 seconds repeat. Maybe we try one more time, but eventually it would build into something else. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have another question here. It says, should parents focus on small certain tasks first to not overwhelm kids with a lot of them? For example, when I my, when my son comes home, I have to remind him uh, about his shoes, washing hands, changing clothes, uh, when he plays tight in his room, the screen time, eating, sleeping. And sometimes I think um, it's a lot um, and I need to focus on some of them first. Can I take this one? Yeah, I mean... Uh, so me, these are these are really great uh, questions. If I was your coach in this program, I'd be salivating over <laughs> some of these questions. Um, you you and your coach are going to look at different strategies to set you and your child up for success, right? And and your approach your approach to parenting is already showing me that you're like focusing on like, hey, right? This is like this is my priority. This is what I'm going to focus on, and then we'll get to to everything later. So. Um, there are tools to make uh, co-op. <laughs> there are tools to make a cooperation um, uh, simpler, right? There are tools to make um, uh, communication a little bit easier as well, right? And that's what uh, the entire program, just like Becky said, right? Like each session, we're going to focus on one particular tool, and through uh, the entire program, we'll look at a variety of different ways to simplify cooperation. But it's a good question. Thank you, James. Yeah, I think um, I, um, that's that's the only questions we have so far. Let me see if I have here. Oh yeah, it says, are there any costs associated with the program or resources? So no, the program is uh, completely free. I mean, of course, there's the cost of time, um, recognizing that, you know, doing this weekly um, subsequent sort of session is a big ask of parents. So you note know, we mail out the materials to you. Um, and yeah, it's completely free. The only um, the only limit I would say, of course, balancing free, there is things we have to kind of create boundary wise, like you only get a certain amount of cancellations um, before we would consider file closure because we need to be mindful of, you know, the wait list and things like that. And so there is a limit to how many sessions you can miss depending on which uh, program you're in. Are the sessions attended by more than one parent at a time? It's a great question. So um, uh, the parent who completes the bulk of the intake process is deemed the primary parent. Um, other parents and caregivers may join as well. Um, uh, seeing that it is uh, uh, telehealth, uh, we can link in yeah, another parent, another, care, another caregiver on the line as well. So um, we do our best to support different situations and different um, contexts as well. Um, yes, good question. I, we have one more. It says, I know 
I've been referred in the past and the waiting list is extensive. Has this improved? And how long is the waiting list? Thank you. We knew this question would come up. <laughs> um, my answer is sort of yes and no in some ways. Um, we are experiencing and have been for probably ever since the pandemic, a surge of referrals, numbers we've never seen before. Um, and so our wait list is quite long right now. It's about from the time you get the referral to when you're connected with a coach. Depends on your availability. If you want a high, high demand time like evenings or weekends, it's a longer wait. If it's if you're really flexible, you'll get seen a little bit sooner. Um, but even still, when I say sooner, you know, 14 to 18 months is probably like the longest wait we've seen. Um, however, we are actually working on measures right now to improve that, um, including, well, primarily looking at group delivery. Um, and one of the big areas where have a surge is in the referral to intake process. So there's kind of two points in which you wait to access our program. The first is between your doctor and our intake team. And then the second is between our intake team and a coach. Um, and right now there's a much, there's a, a weight, part of that weight is in the first chunk. Um, and we've taken on some extra manpower to try and improve that. So at least that would shorten your weight as well. Um, so that's sort of the answer. We know it's not ideal, um, but I think it's, it's a scenario and a reality that a lot of, especially free programs are dealing with right now. We're working on it. I'll give you this next one too, uh, Becky. Mm -hmm. May we have uh, our referral be reopened because we never got connected with a coach? That's a great question. Um, it depends on how old the referral is. Um, if it's what I would tell you, because I don't know the details, um, is to reach out to that general email address um, with your child's name. And we can look into it because if the referral is quite old, you may need to get a new one um, because they do sort of have an expiry as to when, like it's about a year um, and it depends on how far in the process you went. So I would say start there because we can get you an answer. Um, yeah, you may need to get a new referral from your doctor, I guess is, is the, you can always come back though. We have parents who do our program more than once. Um, you know, for a different child or whatever. So there's, once we've closed, it's not a forever thing. And then it says, uh, let's just, I just want to be mindful about everyone's time. Uh, I'll read um, uh, one more question, uh, which is, can someone who resides outside Canada participate in the program? Uh, no. Um, you have to reside within BC. If you're on vacation, but you're a BC resident, we can do calls like that, um, but we only have licensing for BC. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for attending this webinar. Uh, for uh, I know schedules are very busy. Uh, but families are also very important for all of us. So I, I really um, hope and everyone takes with them um, a, a portion of this program because this program is, is very vast. It's very um, complex, has a lot of information and tools and techniques that it will be hard to dip into one hour webinar. Uh, but uh, I, I'll say... Um, uh, CPTK folks are great uh, parenting coaches that can walk you through any uh, parenting um, matters or issues you are experiencing, or if you, you know someone who might uh, find this uh, beneficial, please um, talk about this program uh, with them. And, and looking forward to having you on our upcoming webinars. Um, once you get disconnected, you will be uh, prompted with a survey that will help us to know how uh, you know we did in this webinar. If there are other topics that you are looking to hear um, about, in, in, and we can um, translate that in a webinar format for you. And um, and always uh, there is room for us to um, 
improve and, and provide you with, with good uh, webinar content. So thank you everyone. Thank you, James. Thank you, Becky, for your time and your expertise in, in this uh, field of parenting. And, and take care, everyone. Thank you. It's our Have pleasure. Nice take care. Thank you. Bye-bye for now. Bye. Bye.